We just got all of the brand new iPhones, but today we're gonna focus on the brand new 13 Pro Max and compare it to the 12 Pro Max, but cover things that all the other reviewers didn't talk about, such as the display differences, speaker loudness and quality, MagSafe magnet strength, 5G data speeds, charging wattage, display dimming and overheating, gaming performance, and more. My biggest concern with this new 13 Pro Max is the weight. They made this thing much heavier. It got a little bit thicker. So let's see how it is in the hand. Let me peel this off right away. And do I really notice it? Not that much, surprisingly. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier, but I've actually been wearing a case, a slim case for the last week or so, and maybe that helps, but um, it's really not that bad. It's a little bit noticeable, but not too different. Let's take a look at the back here. We have the brand new blue color here, and personally, I'm not that big of a fan of it, but take a look at that camera bump. We already had a huge one with the 12 Pro Max, this thing is massive. Now we will do some camera tests in this video, but we are gonna be working on an ultimate comparison, not only testing out the new 13 Pro Max, also against the 12 Pro Max, but the 11 Pro Max as well. So if you guys wanna see all of the differences going back even to the older one, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications. Not only are the lenses themselves quite a bit larger and the whole glass is larger, if we take a look from the side, everything is much deeper as well. These are some massive lenses, meaning that the sensors are also quite a bit larger. So let's take a look at this. We have some wobble. Oh, look at that. That is extreme. I remember when he complained about a little bit of wobble. This is getting crazy. Interestingly, all of the buttons are slightly higher, including the SIM card. So you definitely cannot reuse your old case from your previous 12 Pro Max. You have to get a new one. Let's get this phone turned on and we will compare the new notch. But first, I do wanna mention charging bricks. Of course, Apple is not including one. So if you wanna buy one, I would get this anchor. They are not a sponsor of the channel, but this thing is only 11, 12 bucks and it has a flip out prong as well. So it's much smaller than Apple's and it's less expensive as well. But with that, there's something that Apple is not telling you, something that I mentioned in my previous video. And that is the fact that this thing can actually accept more wattage than 20 watts. So we will be testing that in just a little bit. And take a look at that. That new notch is significantly smaller. It's a bigger difference in real life than what you see online. Now, another thing that I noticed is that the speaker is now at the top touching the frame instead of having a cutout in the display itself. And with that, the camera has been moved to the left side from the right hand side. So if you're taking a selfie, make sure you switch where you look at. Overall, that is a pretty significant difference that they made. And with that, you might be able to notice that it is a little bit deeper as well. So it did get a little bit taller, but overall, this is definitely a welcome upgrade. And I hope that the software catches up and we can use that space. I'm really curious if the angle angles have changed with these new sensors for face ID unlock. We will test that in just a bit. But as I'm setting this up, oh my goodness, it is extremely smooth. It also seems like Apple changed um, the animation speed. Everything seems to be very snappy. So not only that refresh rate, but also just how quick everything's happening. The next thing that I'm really curious about is MagSafe. Apple did not mention that they got any better, but we had lots of leaks and rumors. So let's go ahead and test it out. What if they did put in stronger magnets? So right here, the MagSafe that I'm used to, uh, it's really easy to pull up. Wallets pull off pretty easily. Now let's test out the 13 Pro Max. Ah, it's aligning pretty well, but the force that it's required to pull up not much different. Let's give the new wallet a shot. Maybe they increase the magnets in there. Nope, same old, easy to twist, not that strong. So that definitely is a disappointment, but of course Apple didn't advertise that. One huge difference that we do have is the new ProMotion 120 Hertz display. And along with the faster refresh rate, it almost seems like they made the animation smoother. Some of the stuff that I'm switching, going into different settings, seems really quick. As you can see with the slow motion footage, this is definitely noticeable, and it's a really good improvement from before. Not only does this make everything much smoother, but it also can drop down all the way to 10 hertz, and that ends up saving you battery life. So it's a win-win in either way. Now, one thing you guys should know that if you're somebody who likes to use the low power 
mode. When you enable that, that will actually limit it to 60 hertz, but it still will drop down to 10. And you can also toggle this in accessibility. So with the new batteries, and we'll talk about battery life in just a bit, this is a huge update. Apple said that the 13 Pro's new display is now brighter up to 1000 nits. So let's compare that. I have my 12 Pro Max maxed out here and I adjusted the top camera to expose for the screens. Here we go with uh, using manual brightness and to me, they look exactly the same. So it looks like if you're manually adjusting it, you're not gonna get any difference. Let's go ahead and turn auto brightness back on and let's head outside and see if the new one gets brighter. Looking at both side by side, you can tell that the 13 Pro Max is brighter. It's not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. And interesting, now that I'm back inside, you could see that just with auto brightness enabled, the new one does choose to be brighter by default. And now for something that I'm really excited for the speakers. Apple didn't mention that it got better, but every year they're making some improvements. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Wow, guys, did you hear that difference? I was expecting it to get a little bit better, but not that big of a difference. That is a lot louder. And I'm surprised because they moved this speaker, they made that notch smaller, but this thing not only sounds better, it sounds richer, it's quite a bit louder as well. And that gets me excited to compare it to the S21 Ultra. We're gonna do that video soon because those speakers are really good and they blew away the 12 Pro Max. So if you guys wanna see that video, hit that subscribe button down below. And with that, you can help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers, we would definitely appreciate it. And now let's get into performance and we're not only gonna do the standard benchmarks, we are gonna make this interesting. We are gonna start out with Geekbench 5 though. As you guys could see, we're going from 2.99 gigahertz up to 3.23. That is a very high clock speed. Both have six gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark. All right, we have our results and it looks like the difference isn't that big. In single core, we got a 10% gain, pretty much matching up or even slightly beating the M1, which is crazy. In multi-core, we have about a 15% improvement in performance. Now, usually iPhones are larger than that as far as the difference, but of course, in CPU terms, that is pretty good. But what I'm more interested in is the graphics performance. So let's go ahead and run the compute test. Of course, this is the first iPhone that has a five core GPU and the regular 13 or 13 mini has a four core that's been updated. So here we should see a huge improvement. Take a look at that guys. We have 9,383 compared to 14,146. And this is, battling against top of the line ultrabooks with Intel i7s. Crazy performance, that's actually slightly more than 50% higher performance and it actually uses slightly less wattage to achieve that score. That is incredible. Now we are gonna do a couple more graphics tests. We're gonna do 3D Mark, we're gonna do N2 to see if we get any dimming. But first, what I wanna do is test out the SSD or the storage that is in here. Both of these are 128 gig models here. All right, guys, we have some really weird results here. First off, let's take a look at both models, the 12 Pro Max and 13 Pro Max uh, that have 128 gigs. Here, as far as the read speed, it looks like my 12 Pro Max is faster at 1200 compared to 930, but on the right speed, this thing is going up to 1,219 compared to 88. Now this number seemed really weird, and that's probably because my storage is almost full. So Vadim actually got his phone out, and it looks like his 12 Pro Max, that also is 128 gig, the read speed's similar, but the write speed's about 500, just under that. So this shows us that the new 13 Pro Max, same storage size, the write speed is a lot faster than it was before, more than twice as fast. But along with that, he also has his new 13 Pro Max that has a 256 gig storage in here. Look at these speeds, guys. Write speed, 
1254, about the same, but the read is almost at 1600. So it looks like if you buy the base model 12 Pro with 128, you actually go down in storage speeds compared to last year. But if you opt for the 256 one or larger, you have a huge boost. So that will help apps load quite a bit quicker. All right, guys, before we dig deep into graphics performance, thermal throttling, screen dimming, I wanna do a 5G speed test. Now, there is a new modem in this device. Apple didn't give us much info, so let's see how they compare. Both of these are on the same network, connect to the same server, both have two bars out of four, so let's go ahead and test out the speed. Geez, that is a lot slower on the 13 Pro. Somehow finished the download first. That is weird, but the speeds are a lot lower. Same thing is going for the upload. I don't know what is going on. You know what, let me go ahead and cut this out. Let's do these one by one. Maybe the 12 Pro Max is just sucking all the data for itself. So let's run the 13 Pro Max first. We're looking at 38 down and 39 up. Now the 12 Pro Max. And the 12 Pro Max got 86 down, but 26 upload. So it got slower there. That's still a pretty big difference. Um, now let me go outside. We'll do both these tests, not inside a concrete room. All right, guys, so this isn't a fluke. We ran this multiple times outside. We ran them both at the same time and then separately. And the 12 Pro Max is consistently getting faster at download speeds. And here, it was actually slightly faster for both. Now, if this is something that concerns you, make sure you guys are subscribed because in Vadim's review video, which is gonna be amazing, he will test it out in a couple parts, probably in his basement, and see if this is consistent in different parts, not just here where our office is located. Located. All right, guys, this is about to get interesting. We are gonna push these phones to their limits. But first, I wanna take a look at thermals before we get into it. These phones have been resting for about 10 minutes. We've been transferring footage. And look at the 12 Pro Max at the left. It has this hot spot at the bottom that is much hotter than everything else, whereas the 13 Pro Max is much cooler all around. I don't know what that spot is, but I guess we will find out. Now, my biggest complaint about my 12 Pro Max is the screen dimming when you're gaming, when it gets hot, when you're outside. So we're gonna see if it got any better. I have Antutu opened up right here, and I maxed out the screens, which if you're outside, you kind of need to do that. So this is a torture scenario. Let's see if this dims and also how hot they get. And it looks like right away, we're getting a bunch of heat at the top left of the phones. The 13 Pro Max is hitting 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're getting 100 on the 12 Pro Max. And did you guys just see that? Both of them dimmed at the same time. Now that is weird that they pretty much maxed, uh, maxed out there because this one is running about five degrees Fahrenheit cooler. And bam, did you guys see that right there? The 12 Pro Max dimmed even more while the 13 Pro Max is staying um, right where it was after the first dimming. So this is probably roughly about 80% brightness compared to here, probably about 50. That is a huge difference, guys. You guys see that right there. This is unplayable outdoors this is still playable. And that was just so frustrating to me, especially when I was doing things like flying my drone, I ended up crashing because of screen dimming. Let's take another look at thermals. I switched to Celsius this time. That's what we should have been at. 38 degrees Celsius on the 13 Pro Max and 40 on the 12 Pro Max. So even though it dimmed, it is still running much hotter. Of course, the 13 Pro Max also has a new display that is more energy efficient. Let's check what the brightnesses are actually here. So here, let's see, we're going down. All right, so that's roughly, what, 80% or so, like I was guessing? 80% 80 is where we're maxing out at. Above that, it doesn't change. And on this one, we're going, we're going, we're going. All right, there you go that's where we're starting to get capped at. That's about 35%, that's not even 50 where it's capped, and it is still sitting there. It's probably been about three minutes or so since we got done with the graphics. It's still running so hot. Where this one, yeah, we're still capped at about 80%. Thank you, Apple, for solving my biggest complaint. Bam, guys, we have a result, and right there when we got a result, did you guys see how this one just went back to max brightness? Whereas the 12 Pro Max, it is still trying to recover, and it's still sitting there at that 35% or so brightness level. 
That is just incredible. And then taking a look at the overall scores. I mean, I'm sorry guys, you have to look at that brightness. Let me actually turn this down because it's blowing out that camera. Let's get it lower. Uh, we have a 28.5% difference in performance when we take into account the CPU, the graphics, the memory. That memory score is a lot higher here and the UI score. All right, guys, and now let's see the performance differences between the graphics. As you guys could see, both of them have cooled down. They're at the same exact temperature. And I went ahead and I set the brightness to 80% to keep it fair because most people are not going to play with brightness maxed out. We're going to run the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited mode which is 4K, so it's a ton of graphics that are running. And we have a result. We have 15.8 frames per second compared to 12.5. That is about 27% better graphics performance. And it's interesting that it's not at that 50% better as we saw with the metal test, a lot lower here. But of course, this is pushing these phones crazy hard with 4K. Now, what I wanna do next is go into the settings. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on low power mode, with which will use less power. And what's interesting is that the 13 Pro Max, even though it has five graphics cores in this mode, it will only use 3.2 watts compared to 3.5 watts for the four graphics cores in the 12 Pro Max. And this will save battery life for you. And at the same time, it's gonna reduce screen dimming and have less heat. Let's hit start and we'll see what kind of performance we get with a lot less power usage. And here we have the results. Stick with me, I'll explain why why this matters. Here we have 12 frames per second compared to 12.3. So in low power mode, it seems like um, the 12 Pro Max barely changes from 12.5 down to 12.3. Uh, but the 13 Pro Max drops by quite a bit. But when we're running this way, the 13 Pro Max actually uses 22% less graphics power and it only gets 4% less frames per second. Now, I've never thought about using low power mode for gaming, but if you wanna save battery or you wanna minimize screen dimming, this is a perfect mode. And now you can still get fantastic performance, more than enough for every game, even Genshin Impact in low power mode, but you will be saving a lot of battery and not dealing with overheating issues. Let's run Antutu one more time and we will see the difference as far as screen dimming. It's really interesting that in this test, Antutu, in low power mode, it's actually smoother with the 13 Pro Max, uh, even though the FPS was lower in our 3D Mark. We just ran Antutu and this is interesting. First off, the graphics performance, there were three different tests. We actually have about 30% better performance here in low power mode on both. So we're seeing actually a good difference when we're not capping to anything. And then overall, the 13 Pro Max in low power mode is almost as fast as a 12 Pro Max was in regular mode. We actually have just uh, less, less than 5% performance difference. So not only do you have a better, bigger battery, if you really need to save battery life, you will still get super good performance, super smooth performance while being in that low power mode. And now let's talk about battery. Of course, I like I mentioned, the 13 Pro Max has a much larger battery. It's about 18% larger. And through these tests, you'll see that we're actually now at 45% charge on the 13 Pro Max compared to 39. But when we started, the 12 Pro Max was at 75 compared to 7. So those percentages have flip-flopped. And now what I wanna do is test out charging performance. Apple didn't mention that it got any better, but we have heard that the 13 Pro Max can accept much higher wattage now. As you can see, our 12 Pro Max is using 20 watts of power with this meter when it's at around 39% charge. And let's go ahead and unplug it. We'll plug in the new 13 Pro Max. And it looks like the 13 Pro Max is charging at 23.39 watts when it's at 45%. Now, it could actually hit a peak of 27 watts when you're closer to zero compared to 23 with a 12 Pro Max. So if you're somebody that needs to buy a charger, we would recommend buying a 30 watt charger if you want the maximum performance. And keep in mind, the battery is larger, so it takes longer to charge as well. And we'll go ahead and leave a link with our suggested chargers down in the video description below. And now let's talk about the cameras. Apple spent so much time talking about them. And in this video, we're going to cover a few things, the biggest changes. And then along with that, we are going to do a blind camera comparison against the S21 Ultra, which is going to be extremely fun. The S21 got really good. 
and I'm gonna compare the 13 Pro Max against the 12 Pro Max and the 11 Pro Max. We're gonna go back one more generation. You guys don't wanna miss out on that, so make sure you guys are subscribed but let's take a look at the differences. As far as the selfie cam, nothing changed, but we do have that new cinematic mode. So as you guys can see, we have some blur where on the um, 12 Pro Max, you cannot do that only for photos, not video. And then on the back, we also have that cinematic mode. Let's test it out. I'm using tap to focus here to switch from Vadim to this little bush tree thing. And that is a very tough subject. Of course, we're gonna have to look at this in detail, but that is so cool to have that. And you can also take it off later, which you can't do with the Samsungs. And we have the new three times zoom lens. So here's the difference comparing the 2.5 times zoom on the 12 Pro Max. And here is that macro mode. So we're in the ultra wide and dang, I'm surprised by how smoothly that changes focus. Okay, geez Louise, look at that. <laughs> that is crazy close. Let's go ahead and go to this little bush here. Whoa, we're like right in there. That is insane and very smooth when we're changing focus. So all of these lenses and sensors were updated other than the front facing one. So the ultra wide lets in a lot more light. Here's a sample image of that. So we are gonna have to spend a ton of time making some very detailed, very interesting camera comparisons for you guys looking at photo and at video. So overall, what are my thoughts? Well, first off, I do notice the weight more so, especially when I switch hands, holding it with my left hand, you definitely notice it. But it is a really good upgrade. A lot of people are calling it the iPhone 12S, but if the iPhone 12S gives us much better battery life, better performance, 120 hertz display, definitely less dimming, better cameras, I'm all up for it. So if you're somebody that has this phone, is it worth upgrading? Well, I think if you care about pro features, you care about good cameras, care about battery life, yes. And if you have an older phone, the 11, the 10s, the 10, you're gonna notice a huge difference upgrading to the 13 Pro Max. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, you guys can subscribe right over there. You guys can help us reach our goal of a million subscribers. Check out one of those great videos right there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.